How have you suffered publicly as a result of the Depp Waldman statements? What has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? And did you see anything in Bonnie Jacobs' notes over five years in which she diagnosed Ms. Hurd with borderline personality or histrionic personality disorder? Mr. Depp calls Kate Moss to the stand. Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd there is no question pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, I thought you had asked me about it. No, I didn't ask you about anything. So the, with review of, of the images and the x-rays, I mean, this, this was a crush injury. That's the, that would generate the findings clinically on x-ray that we saw. Um, the fracture is, is a, um, we call it comminuted, and the, and the tip of the finger is in multiple splinters. So there are multiple fragments, and typically you see that with a, with a crush type injury. So a comminuted fracture is one where there's multiple fragments of bone? That's correct. And what was the basis, other than what you've read and heard, but from the, from the pictures, what was the basis um, of your opinion that the, the, the hand was resting palmer side down? On well, the that, was, that was the way the, the injury was described um, and demonstrated in the videos. And so... Um, in that position, were the bottle to strike the finger the way it was described, it would have it would have struck on the nail, um, and 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 the nail was really not injured, and and so that's not consistent with with that pattern of injury. Tell us, in relation to your expert opinion on the cause of Mr. Depp's injury, tell us what you see in this picture, please. So so this is a. Um, it looks like an avulsion type injury uh, where tissue is actually pulled or pinched away. Um, I think it, what's important in this picture is that the tissue loss is uh, on the palmer aspect from underneath the finger rather than than all uh, transversely in the finger, which you would anticipate if the if the bottle struck the finger, you would expect more of a this this level of injury rather than isolated to the Palmer aspect. Dr. Spiegel, could you please just summarize for the jury the conclusions you came to with your opinions and then we'll take you through the specifics. So in my opinion, based on my re a review of the evidence, based on my clinical experience, based on my publishing experience, based on my teaching experience, that Mr. Depp has behaviors that are consistent with both someone who has a substance use disorder as well as consistent behaviors for someone who is a perpetrator of intimate partner violence. Thank you. I'm going to start with the impact of drug and alcohol abuse over time. First of all, based upon your review of the record evidence, what type of drugs has Mr. Depp used? So Mr. Depp and I will get, I'm told about use, we're talking about a substance use disorder here. We're not just talking about use, okay? So we are talking about alcohol. We are talking about amphetamines. We are talking about marijuana. We are talking about cocaine. We are talking about LSD. We are talking about ecstasy. We are talking about opiates. We are talking about prescription benzodiazepines. And we'll get into a separate thing about the abusability of Seroquel and or Gabapentin in Iran. And we are talking about, much of the time, concurrent use, meeting simultaneously. Has Mr. Depp suggested, based on your review of the record evidence, that alcohol and drugs actually help him? In review of the evidence, he has suggested that alcohol, Xanax, I'm in the list of medications, do help. Although I will also tell you on review of the evidence that there were at least two times I can remember that uh, Mr. Depp was referring to uh, at least short-lived periods of sobriety, and I cannot exactly tell you what that included, that both times he said that he functioned better and that he recognized that alcohol and drugs was at the root of his problems. During your deposition, what were the circumstances under which you decided to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Under somebody call Mr. Depp an idiot? Yeah, you called Mr. Depp an idiot in your deposition. Why oh, I think, oh, oh, okay. So I think it was in the context. I think it was in the, I should, probably should read the context of it. Because I think the context was, and I'm trying to think back. And I'm trying to think back. 
Okay. And what I thought it was related to was if you're coming to some deposition, okay. And again, I'm thinking back. So I bet you have it in front of you. I don't. So I'm thinking back where was he's coming in from Europe for a deposition, a uh, video deposition that he gave. And he took it overnight the night before. And what I think I said was that if you're going to take a if you're going to do a major thing to a, a trial that you're involved with, I do think you'd be an idiot to come in the night before. All right. So I didn't call Mr. Depp an idiot. I certainly called that planning an idiot. I didn't call him an idiot. So the words, so I mean he's an idiot, are mistranscribed? No, I'm sure. Again, if I said it in that, con if you just read one line, one snippet, I'm sure it was in the context I just said. But again, you have it in front of you. I don't. Yeah. Um, is... Uh Idiot, a professional opinion? I wasn't running professional opinion. Yeah. No. Is it a psychiatric opinion? And that follows the the Goldwater rule. How does it follow the? Well, I just said that I'm not rendering a professional opinion. I just said idiot. That's not a. No, Goldwater so idiot opinion. is not a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it your practice to describe people as idiots? In my practice to describe people. In my practice. No, I don't describe people, clinical, my clinical cases as idiots or patients as idiots or victims as idiots. No, sir. But you sat for a deposition in this case and, and described the plaintiff as an idiot, correct? Uh, you gave me nine hours of deposition. And if I said the word idiot, it was an idiot in planning. It wasn't making him an idiot. I don't know Mr. Depp's IQ. I don't know his overall functioning. So therefore, if I said it, it was an idiot in planning, which is what I meant to come across as. I was asking you about the cognitive decline yes. testimony that you made. Yes. And it was my understanding that at least a portion of that testimony that you rendered was that you derived some evidence of cognitive decline from the way Mr. Depp testified. Yes. For all you know, that we're, with respect to the exam that you're relying on, Mr. Depp scored 27 out of 30. And that would be telling, though, cognitive, if you score 27 and 30 and you miss three points on memory. That would be very telling. You don't know if Mr. Depp had been up all night the night before. Again, you wouldn't expect to not recall any words at three minutes unless there's a cognitive issue. You don't know if Mr. Depp was high. And again, oh, now that's, again, now that could affect memory, but I'm not, I'm not refuting that. I'm not refuting that at all. I, he could have been high, he could have been drunk, he could have been using cocaine, and that would absolutely affect his memory, which right. is what I said. Yes, you're right. So ultimately, you have no idea what state Mr. Depp was in at the, at the time he took the exam that you're relying on. Short of what you just said about drugs and alcohol, okay, there shouldn't be a reason why a 58-year-old also with strokes and other neurocognitive conditions, but short of that, there shouldn't be a really good reason why someone at that age shouldn't come up with at least one. You rendered an opinion about Mr. Depp's purported cognitive impairment. Yes. Yeah. What do you use as a baseline? A baseline for processing speed? Yeah, for, for analyzing Mr. Depp before you watched his deposition. What do you use a baseline for that? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I guess my baseline would probably be what I, how I've seen him interact in public. I have seen him interact with others. I've seen him interact in media. I've seen him interact all, and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. His process speed was not slow. At deposition, didn't you say that what you did was compare Mr. Depp's performance in lots of pirate movies? against his deposition testimony what here? I, what I said was I've seen Mr. Depp do apology ads. I remember he did apology ad with Bad Dog with no delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. All I'm saying Let me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates to the, tech, uh, to, to the depositions given then in this I, case. Then I apologize for what I said. Then I misspoke. You misspoke, you didn't make the comparison? Right now, just a second ago? Just a second ago, I, I may have said that I misspoke. I apologize, I misspoke. Okay, because you know you can't compare pirates to sworn testimony, right? Yes. Okay. 
But you uh, can, but as an aside, you can't judge someone's processing speed at any time. Like I'm judging yours right now, you're judging mine. We all judge processing speed as a baseline because of what we know about each other. I would say your process speed right now is not slow. So, Thank I you. mean, we're judging processing speed, I'm just saying <laughs> to you. Yeah. Um, so, but no, any of Mr. Depp's other portrayals in movies, did that affect your analysis of processing speed? Only I've seen him interact w on interviews, right. and that was it. Right. When he wasn't in movies. What, right. But Willy Wonka, doesn't matter to you? You, you see him in that movie, Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Did you look at that one when you were comparing his processing speed? Is, is that, do I have to answer that question, Your Honor? You have to answer questions. Yes, sir. No, you'll be happy to know I didn't see Willy Wonka. As a, as I didn't see 21 Jump Street when it happened or whatever it was about. No, I did not. In respect of the fact you know nothing about acting, you've testified that Mr. Depp's use of an earpiece is somehow a cognitive deficit? So if I was giving a lecture and I was fed my lines, I would think there's a cognitive deficit. So I'm, and maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe Hollywood stars get lines fed to them through earpieces all the time, and I, I don't know. I, I, that could be said. It sounded to me to be unusual if you're doing a movie and you don't know the lines. But like you said, I'm just judging what I do with lectures, and I, that would never happen. If you gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not going to tell anybody how to act. I'm sorry, what was the question? I, I said if you gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not telling anybody how to act. Right, I would not use an earpiece during lectures. Right. But I, again, I don't know what the standard for a care of how, standard as Hollywood is for that. I have no idea. You know where, whether Marlon Brando used an earpiece? Whether, isn't he dead? Yeah. So the answer is no, he does not use one now. Oh, no, I, 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 I used the past tense. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, again, I know nothing. I will concede to you I know nothing about acting. I will concede to you 100%. If that is the standard and people are done that acting, then I apologize and that was wrong on my part. If that's the standard, I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay. Let's go with that. Cluster B traits where narcissistic personality falls under is a risk factor for intimate partner violence. Any single trait under is a risk factor for IPV. I, again, I will repeat, cluster B traits. I didn't say any trait, I said cluster. No, I, oh, you let, said me be, let, let me be more precise then. Okay. Any narcissistic trait in and of itself, is a risk factor for IPV. But you are mischaracterizing what I said. What I said, I, I'm pretty sure I said cluster, if you look at all the intimate partner violence literature, and I would behoove you to do so, you will see that cluster B traits, I didn't say narcissistic per se, cluster B traits, where narcissistic personality disorder is part of, are risk factors for intimate partner violence, part and parcel, uniformly true. And I'm not sure, I, the thing I don't understand is, I'm not sure why we're arguing psychiatry, because I'm telling you what it is. Dr. Siegel, you just need to answer the questions. Okay. What, if any, creative concerns did Warner Brothers have about casting Amber Heard as Mira in Aquaman 2? was the concerns that were brought up uh, at the wrap of the first movie, production of the first movie, which is the issue of chemistry. Did the two have chemistry? Um, you know, I think editorially they were able to, to make that relationship work in the first movie, but there was a concern that it took a lot of effort to get there. And would we be better off recasting, finding someone who had better, more natural chemistry with Jason Momoa uh, and move forward that way? Did Warner Brothers... Uh take any steps affirmatively to audition other actresses for the role of Mira in Aquaman 2? No, we did not. Other than the creative concerns and concerns about chemistry you testified about, was there any other reason 
Warner Brothers delayed in picking up Ms. Herbert's option for Aquaman 2? No, it was all it was all concerns about whether she was the right bit of casting for the movie. What role, if any, did Ms. Hurd's dispute with Johnny Depp have in Warner Brothers delay picking in picking up Ms. Hurd's option for Aquaman 2? There was there was none from our end. Have you ever spoken with Jason Momoa about any issues relating to chemistry between he and Amber Heard? Um, yes. When did you speak with Jason Momoa about chemistry issues between he and Amber Heard? It would have been in that same time period where we were prior to green light of the movie. What, if anything, did Rob Cowan say to you about chemistry, what specifically about the chemistry between Amber Heard and Jason Momoa? Just the, the fact that they didn't really have a lot of chemistry together. Um, you know, the, the reality is it's not uncommon on movies for, for two leads to not have chemistry and that it's sort of movie magic and editorial, the ability to sort of put performances together and with the magic of, you know, a great score and and how you put the pieces together you can you can fabricate sort of that chemistry um and so i think in in at the end of the day i think if you watch the movie they look like they had great chemistry but i just know that through the course of the post-production that it took a lot of effort to get there a movie that's not yet been made miss heard further observed that mr depp testified that the op-ed had caused him and his family irreparable harm there thereby suggesting that his reputational harm had continued to the present. Ms. Hurd noted that Mr. Depp's expert designation indicated Michael Spindler relied on Mr. Depp's earnings from 2019 to 2021 when reaching its opinion, which resulted in an amendment to the designation. Um, ultimately, the court found that Mr. Depp had not opened the door to the admission of the UK judgment and overruled the motion, uh, which the court did again today with um, uh, Mr. Banya's um, opinions. Mr. Depp calls Kate Moss to the stand. She will be appearing on your screen. All right, ma'am, ma can you hear me? Yes, can you count to five for me? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, ma'am. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear for him to tell the truth under penalty of law? I do. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Moss, or I should say good afternoon, your, your time. Uh, my name is Ben Chu from the firm of uh, Brown Rudnick. Uh, would you please state your full name for the record? Kate Moss. Ms. Moss, where do you reside? London, England. From where are you testifying today, Ms. Moss? Um, Gloucestershire, England. Ms. Moss, do you know Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. How do you know Mr. Depp? I had a relationship with him. Uh, did there come a time when you and Mr. Depp had a romantic relationship? Yes. For how long, Ms. Moss, were you and Mr. Depp a romantic couple? From 1993 to, no, 1994 to 1998. Ms. Moss, did there come a time when you, uh, while you and Mr. Depp were a couple, that the two of you took a vacation together to the Golden Eye Resort in Jamaica? Yes. What, if anything, happened when you were in Jamaica with Mr. Depp? I, um, we were leaving the room and Johnny left the room before I did and there had been a rainstorm and as I left the room I slid down the stairs and I hurt my back. How did you, and, uh, I apologize Ms. Moss, please continue. And I screamed because I was in, because uh, I didn't know what had happened to me and I was in pain and um, he came running back to help me and carried me to my room and got me medical attention. Did Mr. Depp push you in any way down the stairs? 
No. Uh, during the course of your relationship, did he ever push you down any stairs? No, he never pushed me, kicked me, or threw me down any stairs. Ms. Moss, have you ever before today testified in any kind of court proceeding? No, I have never. Why did you decide to testify today? Objection, Your Honor. All right. That's beyond the scope of what we just talked about. All right, I'll sustain the objection. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moss. Uh, we have nothing further at this time. We greatly appreciate your taking the time to testify. All right, any cross-examination? No, Your Honor. All right, you're free to go. Thank you, Ms. Moss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Hurd testifying that she saw you consume eight to 10 MDMA pills while you were at once, while you were in Australia in um, March of 2015? Yes, I do remember that. How many I also remember her saying that I took a handful. Objection of... beyond the scope? Question. Sorry, I just, that was extra residue. Right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. How many times have you done MDMA in your life, Mr. Depp? Uh, actually, not many, not that many times, I would say, in my lifetime, maybe in my lifetime, MDMA, six, seven, maybe. And how much MDMA have you done on those occasions? Uh, not enough to, um, not enough to uh, properly... Well, not, not not enough to properly properly experience the what the um, chemicals are supposed to do to you. Have you ever consumed eight to ten MDMA pills at once? No, ma'am. No, I have not. And why is that? Um, because I'd be dead. I'm pretty sure I'd be dead. Um, I think one would die. Yes, the and. Probably rather quickly. Mr. Depp, what has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? I'm sorry? I don't, I don't... What has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? Insane. It's, it's insane to hear heinous um, accusations of violence, sexual violence that she's attributed to me, that she's accused me of. Um, I don't think anyone enjoys having to uh, split themselves open and tell the truth. But um, there are times when one just simply has to because it's gotten out of control. It Horrible. Um, ridiculous, humiliating, ludicrous, Painful, savage, un, unimaginably brutal, cruel, um, and all false. All false. No human being is perfect, certainly not. None of us. But I have never in my life committed sexual battery, physical abuse, all these outlandish, outrageous stories of me committing these things and living with it for six years and waiting to be able to bring the truth out. 
So this is not uh, easy for any of us. I know that. But um, uh, no matter what happens, I did get here, and I did tell the truth, and I have spoken up for what I've been carrying on my back reluctantly <laughs> for six years. So where was this photograph taken? That was in the, um, um, that looks like it's in, the, yes, that's towards the back of the Orient Express. That's in the, uh, the, the, the back train com bar compartment. And just out back, you could smoke on the, on the um, sort of caboose or whatever. And what, if any, injuries do you have in this photograph? I think the, um, the, the eyes a little bit bugged out, if you will. It's, yeah. How did that happen? Um, these things could happen very quickly if, if, if you disagreed. Jackson, Your Honor, non-responsive. She just asked, how did that happen? I believe he was about to explain. Well, I'll state the objection. Okay. So, Mr. Depp, specifically, how did the injury in this photograph occur? Um, I'm sure it hit me. Is that better? Dr. Curry, I just want to make sure that uh, we all remember you're not board certified, correct? No, I'm not. Okay. And you've been licensed for how long? I've been licensed for 10 years. Okay. And you are being paid by Mr. Depp's legal team to be here, correct? Yes. How much have you charged so far? I actually don't know. Over 100000 I truly don't know. I don't do my own books. Over 200000 I don't know. Over 300000 That would be way too much, but I do not know. Okay. Um, now, just so that we all remember, you had dinner at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours with Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez, correct? I was interviewed. Mr. Depp's home with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, Ms. Vasquez, and Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And you had drinks as well, correct? I actually don't know. I do remember that there were drinks. Do you recall testifying earlier that you did have a drink, a mule something? No, I remember testifying that there might have been a mule, a okay. Moscow mule. Okay, thank you. We, did, we didn't have animals there as well, right? No animals. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. and, and you talked about transparency. I just want to make sure you had several uh, designations, expert designations and reports in this case, correct? Yes. And in not one of them did you disclose that you had dinner and drinks at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez. Is that correct? Ms. Bredehoff, you're mischaracterizing what occurred. I, Dr. Curry, please answer the question. Not once did you disclose this in any of your reports, I did not correct? disclose that I was interviewed as that standard procedure. But it's true that you have never gone to a client's house to be interviewed for an expert witness position, correct? Yes, because I never had a client that was essentially homebound because of their celebrity status. All right. And, and you talked to Mr. Depp for three to four hours uh, before taking on the role of assessing Ms. Hurd and deciding whether she was suffering from any distress, correct? I did not talk to Mr. Depp. I was talking to his legal team, and he was there to observe. He was present for the three to four yes. hours. Yes. Oh, and are you saying now he just stayed silent and said nothing all, all day? I don't recall what he didn't or didn't do. I was answering questions. Okay. Now, your expertise here is limited to whether Amber Heard suffers from PTSD currently. Is that correct? Yes. I was okay. tasked with conducting an evaluation okay. to determine Ms. Heard's mental you know, status. We're on very, very strict time limitations okay. because we promised to get this case to the jury. So mm -hmm. I'd really appreciate it if you just answer my question rather than trying to go further. Sure. Okay? Thank you very much. Now, after you did, had the dinner 
you then provided the designation in February of 2021 in which you said, and this is long before you ever saw Amber Heard, correct? You said that Amber Heard, quote, exhibits patterns of behavior that are consistent with co-occurring cluster B personality disorder traits, especially borderline personality disorder, end of quote, correct? No. No, you, we went through this before. We did. But, and, and that was on the designation, was it not? I, I told you last time that I did not write that. Okay. And you don't know who did on the legal team, correct? No. Okay. And then I also asked you, if you may recall, whether you listened to the audio recording in which Mr. Depp taunted Amber Heard that she had a borderline personality disorder. Do you recall that? I recall you asking me that, yes. Did you recall listening to that audio tape? I don't recall Mr. Depp taunting Ms. Heard. Okay. I do recall that he at some point suggested she might have that diagnosis. Under what circumstances would you normally send paparazzi to a courthouse? Uh, only if we had been informed prior. It's not by any means a celebrity hotspot. Um, we would only ever send people there if we had been tipped off that something was occurring and there was somebody present there. And what footage was TMZ trying to capture at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? We were trying to capture uh, Amber leaving the courthouse and an alleged bruise on the right side of her face. What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, hearsay and foundation. What were they supposed to do? Right. She's oh. asking for, I, I, I don't think there's a foundation. I, I, I'll hearsay. overrule the objection at this point. I'll see. Go ahead, Mr. Tremaine. Can you uh, say the question again? What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the Los Angeles courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Their objective was to capture her leaving the courthouse and then she was going to sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face, the alleged bruise. Did your team of videographers get the shot of Amber Heard? We did. How have you suffered publicly as a result of the Depp Waldman <laughs> statements? Objection, speculation. Overruled. I am harassed, humiliated, threatened every single day. Even just walking into this courtroom, sitting here in front of the world, having the worst parts of my life, things that I've lived through used to humiliate me. People want to kill me, and they tell me so every day. People want to put my baby in the microwave, and they tell me that. Johnny threatened, promised, promised me that if I ever left him, he'd make me think of him every single day that I lived. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. A sustained objection as to that, if you want to ask the question. Amber, how did Mr. Depp's statements and threats to you that you were discussing, how do those continue to manifest themselves today? In the harassment, in the humiliation, the campaign against me that's echoed every single day on social media and now in front of cameras, in this room. Every single day I have to relive the trauma. My hands shake, I wake up screaming. I, I have to live with the trauma and the damage done to me. My friends have to live with a set of unspoken rules about how to not scare me. Objection hearsay. Yes, sir. Unspoken rules. It's not, it's not Go ahead. About how to not touch me, not to surprise me, my intimate partners have rules about how they can deal with me, how they can touch me. I have rules for doctors and medical professionals I see, gynecologists I see. I live my life with these sets of rules that I have to follow, my friends have to follow for me not to have a panic attack or a triggering event where I relive the trauma. Even if I'm training to do my movie, for instance, if I'm training for Aquaman, a combat scene and a trigger happens, I have a meltdown 
and have to deal with that. The, the, the crew I work with have to deal with that because of the damage I walk around with every single day from what I've lived through, from what I've survived. I'm not sitting in this courtroom snickering. I'm not sitting in this courtroom laughing, smiling, and making snide jokes. I'm not. This is horrible. This is painful. And this is humiliating for any human being to go through. And perhaps it's easy to forget that, but I'm a human being. And even though Johnny promised that I deserve this and promised he'd do this, I don't deserve this. I want to move on. The statements, the attacks on me, the campaign, that, it, that Johnny has elicited millions of people to do on his behalf when he himself Objection, couldn't do it. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. Torture me. Speculation. I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Amber, how have the Depp Waldman statements impacted your ability to do charitable work? You know, I would, the only reason that people like Dr. Kirby can sit up here on the stand and say I'm high functioning and I do things like have hobbies and have interests is Objection because I'm responsive. Your Honor, Mr. Depp gave long-winded oh. responses oh, yesterday. Oh, okay. It's because I found a solution to that pain. I woke up every morning with panic attacks and trauma until I realized I could do something with it. So to answer your question, Ben, it's I, I was able to turn the things that I've lived through, my pain, my life experiences into work, into action, into providing a voice for other people. I'm not a saint. I'm not trying to present myself as one, as you all know, but I selfishly found relief in being able to use what I've lived through to advocate for others, to, to bring light to these issues, to give a voice to people who don't have the voice and the platform that I have. And while I would not wish this situation on my worst enemy, if it gives a voice to someone who doesn't have it, but I now, as I stand here today, can't have a career. I can't even have people associate with me because of the threats and the attacks that they have to endure. Josh, when they are. And I can't so do my charity work. Sustain the objection. Amber, other than the threats that you've described, what other threats have you endured since the Debt Waldman statements were made? I receive hundreds of death threats regularly, if not daily, thousands since this trial has started people mocking, mocking my testimony about being assaulted, making fun of my... Objection relevance, non-responsive. What's the damages? It's been agonizing, agonizing, painful, and the most humiliating thing I've ever had to go through. I hope no one ever has to go through something like this. I just want Johnny to leave me alone. I just want him to leave me alone. I've said that for years now, and I thought he would after 2020. Objection non-responsive. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. What do you hope to reclaim after this is over? Protecting the secret that I did for as long as I did has taken enough of my voice. Johnny, Johnny has taken enough of my voice. I have the right to tell my story. I have the right to say what happened to me. I have the right to my voice and my name. He took it long enough. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to own my story and my truth. I have that right. I hope to get my voice back. It's all I want. And I've said that from day one. Thank you, Amber. I don't have anything else. All right, cross-examination. 
Ms. Hurd, you just testified that this case has been very hard for you. So let's talk about that and why. All right. Your lies have been exposed to the world multiple times, right? I haven't lied about anything I've been here to say. You sat here and told this jury that the events in Hicksville started with Mr. Depp getting really upset about a woman leaning on you. Is that correct? Yes, that's effectively what happened, yeah. You testified that he actually grabbed that woman's wrist and twisted it, right? And told her that he could effectively break her wrist by saying he knew how many pounds of pressure, asking her how many pounds of pressure it took to break a human wrist. But your own witness, your former best friend, Rocky Pennington, she didn't corroborate that, did she? Uh, I'm not quite sure what part of that night she saw. There were a lot of people there. She didn't testify that Mr. Depp grabbed anyone's wrist in Hicksville. Again, I don't know what Rocky saw. There were a lot of people there that night. You testified that once you brought Mr. Depp back to your trailer, he trashed it, correct? That is correct. And the manager of the Hicksville trailer park was furious that Johnny had wrecked the whole thing. Do you remember that testimony? That's correct. Well, we heard from that manager of the Hicksville trailer park, Morgan Knight, on Monday, didn't we? I'm not quite sure who that guy was or if he had any involvement in this. I know a lot of people have come out of the woodwork to be in involved. So you're accusing Mr. Knight of testifying and committing perjury? I'm not accusing anyone. I just don't recognize that man. You heard Mr. Knight testify that it was actually you who was upset with Mr. Depp spending time away from him. Isn't that correct? How would he know? He wasn't there. You heard Mr. Knight testify that it was actually you who was yelling at Mr. Depp. Again, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things to be involved in the Johnny Depp show, but he wasn't there. He doesn't know. And he certainly doesn't know what happened behind closed doors, like most people. So you're calling Mr. Knight a liar? I am saying he wasn't there, and what he testified to doesn't match what I know happened. But I don't fault him. He wasn't there, so how would he know? He testified he was there, Ms. Heard. Did you hear that? That's his testimony, yes. So you're calling him a liar? I'm just saying he wasn't there. You heard Mr. Knight testify that the trailer wasn't trashed, and that's why you're calling him a liar. He testified that a light fixture was broken, similar to the way that yes, Johnny's other than a light fixture, testified that was the only to my thing closet that was broken, being rearranged right? Ms. Heard? and things Ms. like Heard? that. The only thing that was broken in the trailer, according to Mr. Knight, was a light fixture. Yes or no? I realized that he summed it up by saying a light fixture was broken, just the way his security guard summed up him trashing my closet as being rearranged. Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike everything after he summed it up that it was a light fixture as non-responsive. She answered the question, Your Honor. Yeah. Over, overruled. In the security guard testimony, Your Honor? I'll allow it. Go ahead. Mr. Knight also testified that he charged Mr. Depp only $62 for the damaged light fixture. You heard that, correct? I did. In Hicksville, you were the only one that was jealous that Mr. Depp was spending time from other people. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? That is incorrect. In Hicksville, you were the one who was upset that Mr. Depp wasn't giving you enough attention. Incorrect again. Ms. Hurd, you told this jury that you had no idea the press was going to be at the courthouse when you got your TRO on May 27, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, I said I did not have anything to do with it. Yes. No. My question again. You told this jury that you had no idea that the press was going to be outside after you got the ex-party TRO on May 27, 2016. Do you remember that testimony? I apologize. I must have misunderstood, Ms. Vasquez. Um, I actually had no idea whether they were going to be there or not. When I walked into the courtroom that day, it was completely quiet, still, empty. Even though I had given Johnny's team notice that I was filing Objection. a TRO, your Honor, this is not we responsive. had no reason to Move believe to the press knew. And, Your Honor, I would also ask that you instruct the witness to please stop talking once I lodge an objection. Your Honor, she's trying to answer the question as best she can, and Ms. Vasquez is misrepresenting to her what she testified to. Well, I'll instruct the last part as non-responsive. Just if you could just answer the questions asked. Okay? Thank you, Ms. Hurd. In fact, you testified that you were, quote, shocked when you saw press when you were leaving the courthouse. Yes? Yes. You weren't shocked at all, though, were you? Uh, incorrect. It was You knew the horrifying. press would be at the courthouse, right, Ms. Hurd? No. Well, you did bring your publicist to the courthouse with you on May 27, 2016, didn't you? I sure did. I'm a public figure. I brought my publicist in case it blew up. In case. And you actually had alerted TMZ that you would be filing a TRO against Mr. Depp that very no, day, I did didn't not. you? 
No, I did the not. The one day you didn't bother to wear makeup to cover up the mark on your face. I did not call TMZ or any other news source or paparazzi source. No one. Well, I we never heard did that. testimony from former TMZ employee Morgan Tremaine yesterday, correct? Did I hear his testimony? Yes. Yes, I was he here. Yes. And you heard Mr. Tremaine's testimony that he knew to dispatch the paparazzi to the courthouse on May 27th, right? I heard him say that he knew that, yes. Yeah, and that he dispatched paparazzi to the courthouse to capture a picture of an alleged bruise on the right side of your face. Do you remember him saying that? I remember him saying that. That information must have come from your team, right, Ms. Hurd? Absolutely not. Why would I want that? What actual survivor of domestic violence wants that? Now, the video of Mr. Depp beating up some kitchen cabinets, you admit that you took that video, correct? Yes, I did. Right. And you acknowledge that the video was released online the day before you were deposed in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp in August of 2016, right? I believe it was, yes. But you testified that you had absolutely nothing to do with the video's release, right? Absolutely not. And you testified that you learned about it when you landed after flying into L.A. Do you remember uh, that testimony? Upon touchdown is when I was alerted to the video's you existence You heard Mr. Online. Tremaine testify that this, about this video as well yesterday, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ received the cabinet video the same day you landed at LAX, yes? I don't know if, that, I, I don't know if that's what his testimony was, I'm sorry. You heard Mr. Tremaine testify that the cabinet video was posted 15 minutes after TMZ received it, yes? That's what I heard him say. And that this could only have been possible if the video was received directly from the source. Yes? I heard him say that. I don't know if that's true or if that's possible. Because it didn't come from me. Mr. I was flying. Tremaine so testified. It, it, I know that's incorrect is what I mean to say. Another liar on the stand? I just know that that's incorrect. All right. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ owns the copyright to the cabinet video, right? That's news to me. The cabinet video you filmed of your then husband, yes? The copyright ownership of that is news to me. I learned that yesterday. It's the cabinet video that you captured of your then husband, yes? That is correct. I did capture that video, and the yes, that video, was my husband. The same cabinet video that was released the night before you were deposed in your divorce, yes? That's correct. Okay. You must have also heard Mr. Tomaine testify that the version of the cabinet video that TMZ received was incomplete compared to the video the jury saw in this trial. Did you hear that? The video that the jury, that you have seen is complete. Right, but the one TMZ got the day before your deposition in the divorce was incomplete. I don't know, I haven't seen it. He testified that at the beginning portion of the video where you set up the camera, that wasn't included in the video that TMZ received. I don't know what video TMZ received. I'm talking received. about Mr. Tremaine's testimony, Ms. Hurd. Let's just so focus you're asking on me Mr. to repeat Tremaine. his testimony? No, I'm asking you if you recall hearing him say those words to this jury. Yes, Under I heard his testimony. Okay. We all did. And he testified that the end of the video where you can see be seen smirking. I know you testified earlier that you haven't been smirking in this trial, but you sure were caught on camera smirking in that video. I disagree with that. Not was also not included in the TMZ video. Everyone can watch that video and you can determine whether you think it's funny to me or not. That's because the video came from you, right, Ms. Hurd? No, it did not. You edited that video out did the not portions. Come to me. No, I mean, come from me. Ms. Hurd, you edited out the portions that made you look bad before sending it to TMZ. <laughs> you are very wrong about that. So that if only I wanted Mr. to Depp leak information, I could have bad. done it in a more effective way, a lot sooner and a lot more. Because you I was exactly living with a mountain that, right? of this evidence. If I wanted to leak it, I could have done a lot more with it. I thought you testified earlier in this trial that you didn't know how to leak things. Remember I don't. That? You edited that video before you gave it to TMZ so that only Mr. Depp would look bad, yes? That's absurd. Right in the middle of your divorce proceedings. Again, you're very wrong. I'd like to show you um, a picture from that's already admitted into evidence. It's uh, Defendant's Exhibit 799. This is you at the courthouse on May 27, 2016 when you got your domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? It is. And next to you is a woman named Jody Gottlieb, right? Yes. Jody Gottlieb is your publicist. And dear friend. Now I'd like to show you what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1316. This is a picture of you and your friend Rocky Pennington, right? That is correct. Your Honor, I'd like to move to admit this photograph. This is a picture of you on May 28, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know when this was taken. 
This is the day after you obtained the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? I have no idea when this um, image was taken. I did not take it. There's no bruise on your face in this picture, is there? Again, I don't know when this was taken. And also, I'm outside. I was obviously wearing makeup. I have no idea when this was taken, so I have no idea if I can Let's speak to what bruise you can Let's see Let's refresh your recollection about when this picture was taken. Um, can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1315, just for the witness? This is an article dated May 30th, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's what it says, yes. And this article contains the same photograph of you and Ms. Pennington we were just looking at, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, I see that. And the article is entitled, Amber Heard Smiles as She Puts Arm Around Friend One Day After Getting Restraining Order Against Johnny Depp. Is that, is that what the title says? I know that's what the title says, yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit and publish the article with everything but the headline and date and the photo redacted. Objection, Your Honor. That's inconsistent from the way we've treated I all of these. I'll sustain the objection. All right, next question. Let's take a look at picture plaintiff's exhibit 1317. This is also a picture of you and Ms. Pennington on May 28th, 2016, isn't it? I don't know when this photo was taken, but it looks like the same outing as the picture prior. Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit and publish plaintiff's exhibit 1317. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Right, 1317 in evidence, you can publish. There's no bruise on your face in this picture either, right? I disagree. Uh, if it is taken when you represent it was taken, then obviously there's a bruise on my face. It's covered by makeup as per usual. Let's zoom out of that picture for a moment, please. Thanks, Tom. That's Josh Drew in this picture, right? Yes, that's correct. And Ms. Pennington? That is, is correct. In there too? Ms. That Pennington is correct. submitted a sworn statement on your behalf in support of your domestic violence restraining order, didn't she? I believe she did, yes. Mr. Drew also submitted a statement in support of your domestic violence restraining order. I believe they both did, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hurd, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 512, which is already in evidence. You've seen this photograph before, right? I have. On the second day of your direct testimony, you testified that this was taken in the downstairs of the main apartment on December 15th, 2015. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes, I believe so. So it's your testimony that Defendant's Exhibit 512 reflects damage to Penthouse 5 that occurred during the December 15th, 2015 incident. Yes? Uh, I'm not quite sure from what incident this is when I see this photo in a, in a vacuum without context. Let's give you that context, specifically on starting on line 16, where it says, let's talk about December 15th, 2015. I'm, you said 4585, oh, I'm on 4485, sorry. You said 4584. 4585, line 16. And do you see that you testify that Defendant's Exhibit 512, which is on the screen, yes. is a picture of the downstairs of the main apartment? That's correct. And the main apartment is Penthouse 5 in the Eastern Columbia Building, right? No, the, well, depends on what, the main apartment's penthouse three generally when we say main apartment. Penthouse five was where you had your closet? The downstairs was kind of like, a, had some of my painting studio set up and a reception area. Upstairs was the closet. Got Mezzanine it. office yeah. was in between. All right, so it's your testimony that Defendant's Exhibit 512 reflects damage to the penthouse, penthouse five, that occurred during the December 15th, 2015 incident. Right? I'm just not sure from which incident this is a picture of, since I'm only looking at Even a though your counsel floor. was asking you questions about December 15th, 2015, and then admitted this test, this picture into evidence? I, again, in, in my relation to that incident. Sorry, go ahead. What in what? relation to that incident on December 15th, 2015. This exhibit, defendant's exhibit, you are the defendant, number 512, was admitted into evidence in this court. You testified that this was the result of damage that occurred on December 15th, 2015. Yes or no? Uh, I just need to orient myself because I'm just looking at a picture of a partial no, picture of a No, Ms. Heard, you didn't just so look I at can't. a picture. You looked at your testimony. I, you pointed me towards the page and then asked me a question. I haven't actually reviewed it. I don't know if this was submitted in relation to that incident. Let's pull up, let's actually leave up Defendant's 512 and please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 725. You've seen this photograph as well, right? I have. 
On the third day of your direct testimony, you testified that this photograph reflected spilled wine in Penthouse 5 on May 21st, 2016, didn't you? Again, I don't know because I'm looking at a partial picture of a floor. So unless you remove the metadata you've covered up, we could then tell. If you I didn't remove, cover it up, Your Honor. Could I, we unredact them Honor, so we could get context? That's, that's how it's in evidence. That's how All it's right. in evidence. Next question. Well, the metadata next to it is so that Ms. Heard, to avoid this Ms. Heard, sort of there is no question pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, I thought you would ask me about it. No, I didn't ask you about anything. Do you see where Ms. Bredehoff asked you to describe for the jury what took place on May 21st, 2016? I see that. Okay. And do you see that your testimony is reflected about May 21, 2015? Yes. That follows? Okay. Yes. Now let's turn to page 4804. Do you see that you're testifying that defendant's exhibit 725, which is reflected on the right side, reflects spilled wine on the floor in Penthouse 5? That's correct. Okay. And defendant's exhibit 512 and 725 seem to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay. So which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015, or May 21st, 2016? If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. Recognize a portion of a, a, a spilled wine on a floor, and I'm supposed to know off the top of my head when you've no. lived through five years of this stuff? I don't think so. That's not how that works. Okay. Ms. Hurd, at the beginning of your cross-examination last week, I showed you an audio where you told Mr. Depp to tell the jury, tell the judge, tell the world that he is a victim of domestic abuse. Do you remember that? That's correct. And you testified you found it hard to believe that Mr. Depp would tell the world that he's a victim of domestic abuse, didn't you? I said I find it hard to believe that he would do that knowing that he himself had beat me up for five years. But he has told the world that he's your victim of domestic abuse, hasn't he? Well, he started to say that only recently. He didn't make that claim up until very recently. So when we signed our divorce agreement and we signed a statement saying that neither party had ever said false claims for financial gain, it was relevant and important to me because I was the only one making the accusations. I was the only one making those claims. He wasn't doing that at the time, and he signed his name to it. You didn't expect as many people to show up and testify on his behalf that did, did you? Incorrect. When you told this jury under oath that you punched Mr. Depp because you thought of Mr. Depp pushing Kate Moss down the stairs, you didn't expect Ms. Moss to agree to testify that that never happened, did you? Incorrect. I know how many people will come out of the woodwork to be in support of Johnny. So it you think Ms. Moss needs to come out of the that. woodwork to testify for Mr. Depp? Everybody who was around in the 90s and the early aughts knew that rumor. I had heard that rumor from multiple people. Of course, that's what flashed through my head when my violent husband not only swung for me, but all of a sudden swung for my sister. Of course I thought of that. I did not expect her to show up or not expect her to show up. It didn't matter. It doesn't change what I believed at the time when we were on the stairs and I thought he was going to kill my sister by pushing her down the stairs. You told this jury under oath that Mr. Depp was aggressive and trashed a trailer in Hicksville. You didn't expect the manager of the Hicksville property, Morgan Knight, to come forward and testify that that was untrue, did you? Incorrect. I've already been through trials with this man. I know how many people will come out in support of him. When you told this jury under oath that you had no idea that the paparazzi would be at the courthouse on May 27, 2016, you didn't expect a TMZ employee to show up to testify that TMZ had been alerted that you would be at the courthouse and knew exactly which side of your face to take a picture of, did you? I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's his power. That's why I wrote the op-ed. Is I was speaking to that phenomenon. How many people will come out in support of him and will fall to his power? He is a very powerful man, and people love currying favor with powerful men. Currying and I know that and firsthand. I've lived jail it. time for committing perjury. Excuse me. I didn't. I didn't hear your question. You didn't Excuse hear my me. Question. Miss Vasquez, if you do mind, curry, please just repeat the question. I didn't hear you. Curry favor and commit perjury in this courtroom. I have seen for a powerful people do this. Man? I have seen people do this time and time again. That's why I wrote the op-ed. You didn't expect Ben King, the house manager in Australia, to show up from England. He flew from England to testify that Mr. Duff's fingertip was found exactly where he said it would be. Did you? I have never heard Johnny testify to knowing where his finger was or really, frankly, making a claim that he knew where it was when it was found. 
I've never heard Johnny claim that. You didn't expect Johnny Keenan Wyatt. Johnny has never misheard. actually said that. Ms. Heard. And I think the jury can, yes. Ms. Heard, there's no question pending. You didn't expect Keenan Wyatt, Mr. Depp's longtime sound technician, to show up and testify that Mr. Depp is not being fed lines through his earpieces, but instead music, did you? Not that it matters much, but of course, of course I did. I, I know how his employees treat him. So you probably, I know how his, his team treats him. Of course I expected that. Okay, so you probably expected Isaac Baruch to come and testify for Mr. Depp, right? Um, I'm not sure I thought about that. Yeah, but you didn't expect Mr. Baruch to weep, to weep for Mr. Depp after what you've put him through and so many others with your lies. I relate you? to I relate to Isaac because he and I There's are the only no ones who cried right. on this stand. Nothing further. All right, Cry, uh, redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hurd, if, if Mr. Baruch felt misled, who misled him? Johnny, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him from crying. This is horrible. Ms. Vasquez has suggested that you faked bruises on your face. Is that true? Absolutely not, I didn't need to. Did you ever fake an injury caused by Mr. Depp? No. Is any of the evidence of your injuries that has been put to the jury in this trial fake? No, absolutely not. And to the extent that there may be some confusion over when a picture of spilled wine was taken, why might that be? Objection, so lack many, of foundation. Uh, overruled. Because there's so many incidents of violence. There are so, there's so many pictures. There's so much evidence. Most people don't have this kind of evidence for years, five years. And when I was saying that to Johnny on the phone in that recording, I was saying for years this has been going on. And I have pictures. We have texts. We have everything. Normally, you don't get this amount of evidence. That's what I was pointing out to Johnny. It would be crazy to try to challenge this in this way. It's crazy. It's easy to, to not know the context of a, a picture of spilled wine because there are so many more important details, pictures, and also so much I didn't photograph, so much I didn't have the presence objection, of Objection, non-responsive. Right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Did Mr. Depp abuse you physically? Yes. Verbally? Yes. Emotionally? Yes. Psychologically? Yes. How did the threats that Mr. Depp made against you individually years ago resemble what you've endured as a result of the Depp Waldman statements? Beyond the scope of cross, Your Honor. Overruled. Johnny promised me, promised me he would ruin me, that he'd ruin my career, he'd take my life from me, death was the only way out, and if I got out, this is what he'd do to me. He'd make me think of him every single day. He promised me global humiliation. You saw those texts? He, he, what he couldn't do, the work of one individual, meaning Johnny, when he was inviting a, a disgruntled employee over for a spot of purple to fix my flabby ass up, that revenge that he sought back then was just what he could do as an individual, calling the studio to get me fired, trying to block camp. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation, speculation, hearsay, non-responsive. I'll sustain this to non-response. Ms. Hurd, how did those things that you just testified to that Mr. Depp did, how did those resemble what happened to you after the Depp-Waldman counterclaim statements were made? Well, those are... Objection, just... Your Honor, lack of foundation. She's overruled. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Those are just an echo of what I'm living through today. It's like what I'm living in right now, what you see in this courtroom is an echo. This courtroom and the other courtroom he dragged me into to do the same thing again. That's just an echo of the violence and the abuse that I suffered within our relationship. The campaigns to have me fired, the blocking me to try to ruin my career, the threats he's made to humiliate me globally are being lived out in real time in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, for the past six weeks and for the whole world since our camera's here. No further questions. Thank you so much, Amber. All right, Ms. Heard, you can have a seat next to your attorneys. On May 27th, 2016, Ms. Heard walked into a courthouse in Los Angeles, California to get a no-notice ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp, and in doing so, ruined his life, 
by falsely telling the world that she was a survivor of domestic abuse at the hands of Mr. Depp. Today, on May 27th, 2022, exactly six years later, we ask you to give Mr. Depp his life back by telling the world that Mr. Depp is not the abuser Ms. Hurd said he is, and hold Ms. Hurd accountable for her lies. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as you probably know by now, my name is Camille Vasquez. On behalf of Mr. Depp and all my colleagues at Brown Rednick, I want to thank you deeply for your time and your service over these last seven weeks. We understand that it probably has not been convenient for you to be here every day, and we are so grateful for your time and careful consideration of the evidence as you deliberate. After weeks of sitting in this courtroom, listening to testimony and looking at evidence, now it's time for you, the jury, to come to a decision. You have been entrusted with a serious task. What is at stake in this trial is a man's good name. Even more than that, what is at stake at this trial is a man's life. The life that he lost when he was accused of a heinous crime and the life he could live when he is finally vindicated. She tipped off the paparazzi so they would be waiting. They knew exactly where she would pause, which side of her face to photograph. And the photos captured what she wanted them to see, the image of a battered woman. What the paparazzi did not know is that the dark mark on her face mysteriously appeared six days after last seeing Mr. Depp. It was a lie. She knew it. Mr. Depp knew it, and the multiple witnesses you heard from who saw her that week of May 21st, 2016, also knew it. But the world only saw what she wanted them to see. Ms. Hurd presented herself to the world as a public figure representing domestic abuse. The headline of the op-ed featured the term sexual violence even though she had never before accused her ex-husband of such a heinous crime. Ms. Hurd and her lawyers love to remind you of how the op-ed did not mention Mr. Depp by name, but Ms. Hurd made sure that there would be no mistake about who she was referring to. She inserted, two years ago, so the world would remember the photo of a battered woman, the mark on her face standing outside the courthouse, and they would once again see Mr. Depp as the villain this time in full swing of the Me Too movement. But what was happening behind closed doors was quite different from what Ms. Hurd presented to the world. The exact opposite, in fact. There is, a, there is an abuser in this courtroom, but it is not Mr. Depp. And there is a victim of domestic abuse in this courtroom, but it is not Ms. Hurd. The evidence presented at this trial has shown that Ms. Hurd is in fact the abuser, and Mr. Depp the abused. As you heard from Mr. Depp and multiple other witnesses that testified under oath at this trial, Mr. Depp experienced persistent verbal, physical, and emotional abuse by Ms. Hurd during their relationship. And when their relationship was over, Ms. Hurd inflicted the greatest and cruelest injury of all. She publicly and falsely named Mr. Depp as the abuser. Ms. Hurd never thought she would be held accountable never thought that she would have to face her abuser. She never thought she would, never, she would have her supposed mountain of evidence vetted. She never thought that Mr. Depp would tell you, the jury, and the world that he was the real victim of domestic abuse. She said it in her own words. Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too of domestic violence, and yes. I know it's a fair fight. And please tell me people believe or side with you. At the start of this case, Mr. Chu and I stood before you to give you our opening statements on behalf of Mr. Depp. During that statement, we made promises to you about what the evidence would ultimately show at the end of this trial. We've kept those promises. One of those promises we made was that you would come to understand who Ms. Hurd is, that she is a deeply troubled person, 
violently afraid of abandonment, desperate for attention and approval. And in her relationship with Mr. Depp, she was violent, she was abusive, and she was cruel. You heard from Dr. Shannon Curley, who explained that Ms. Hurd suffers from borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. These are disorders that are characterized by anger, sometimes uncontrollable and explosive anger, and a powerful, sometimes desperate need for attention, acceptance, and approval. Fear of abandonment is the deepest fear. A person with these disorders will suffer from dramatically fluctuating moods and can sometimes be violent and aggressive. They can also be charming and likable, but they can be incredibly manipulative and wild. An emotional roller coaster with wild swings from idolizing their partner to devaluing him. In fact, you saw that when she completed testing with her own forensic psychology expert, Dr. Don Hughes. Ms. Hurd self-reported that she felt like she had three or four different personalities and that sometimes her temper would explode and she'd completely lose control. Out of Australia, where Mr. Depp sustained the most serious injury from his relationship with Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd spun a story of horror. A three-day ordeal with, drug, with a drug-fueled Mr. Depp violently assaulting her, cutting his own finger off, dragging her through glass, and then bending her back over a counter and raping her with a whiskey bottle. She claimed that she had bruises on her face, cuts all over her arms and feet, and was bleeding from her vagina from the sexual assault. And what did Ms. Hurd say she did? She went upstairs, took some sleeping pills, and went to sleep. The next morning, she took pictures of the mirrors her husband had written on in paint using his amputated finger. She took no pictures of herself, her alleged injuries, or the proper day property damage she testified to in this courtroom. When Malcolm Connolly, Jerry Judge, Dr. Kipper, and Nurse Debbie Lloyd arrived to extract Mr. Depp and get him medical treatment for his finger injuries, you heard from Mr. Connolly, Dr. Kipper, and Ms. Lloyd, all of them testified they did not observe any injuries to Ms. Hurd. And no one, including Ms. Hurd, testified that she sought medical treatment. Other than Ms. Hurd's testimony, all the evidence you've seen in this trial shows that it was Ms. Hurd who attacked and grievously wounded Mr. Depp when she threw a vodka bottle at him, severing his finger. Mr. Depp told Dr. Kipper that when Dr. Kipper arrived to treat Mr. Depp's finger, you've seen the pictures of the bar area in Australia with the broken vodka bottles on the ground and trails of blood drops on the floor and a bloody tissue on the floor. You've heard from Ben King that the tip of Mr. Depp's finger was found in the same bar area. And you heard from Dr. Gilbert that the injury to Mr. Depp's finger could have been caused exactly as he described. And interestingly, you heard from Christina Sexton that Ms. Hurd told her that Mr. Depp injured his finger while swinging a bottle around. Not smashing a phone, as Ms. Hurd surmised in this courtroom, but swinging a bottle around. Ms. Hurd testified that Mr. Depp threw a phone at her face, causing a visible injury. Ms. Hurd has shown you pictures she claims to show this injury, but these photographs are not to be trusted. You heard from Mr. Neumeister that like many of the photographs Ms. Hurd has presented in this case, these photos were stored in a photo editing application. And these photos show signs of manipulation. These two photographs were taken at the exact same time and have the exact same file name, but they are visually different. One shows significantly more redness on Ms. Hurd's face than the other, which doesn't show any injury at all. Ms. Hurd testified the difference is explained by turning on a light but there is no way Ms. Hurd could have taken a picture, turned on a light, and then taken another picture with every hair in the exact same place within the same second. It's impossible. And the very next day after Ms. Hurd walked into court with what appeared to be a bruise on her face to obtain a domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, Ms. Hurd was photographed 
laughing with her best friend, fresh-faced, with no bruise on her face. The mountain of evidence that Mr. Depp abused Ms. Hurd is simply not there. What we have is a mountain of unproven allegations that are wild, over the top, and implausible. And you can't pick and choose which of these wild allegations to believe and which ones to disregard. You either believe all of it or none of it. Either Mr. Depp sexually assaulted Ms. Hurd with a bottle in Australia, or Ms. Hurd got up on that stand in front of all of you and made up that horrific tale of abuse. Either she's a victim of truly horrific abuse, or she is a woman who is willing to say absolutely anything. It is disturbing to think that Ms. Hurd would make up the horrific tales of abuse that she testified to in this courtroom. But this case doesn't come down to whether you believe Ms. Hurd or you believe Mr. Depp. This case comes down to whether you believe Ms. Hurd or you believe Mr. Depp, Christy Dombrowski, Sean Bett, Malcolm Connolly, Travis McGivern, Starling Jenkins, Keenan Wyatt, Dr. Kipper, nurses Debbie Lloyd and Aaron Filotti, Tara Roberts, Ben King, Kate James, Kate Moss, Dr. Kolber, Morgan Knight, Morgan Tremaine, Officers Melissa Sines, Officers Tyler Haddon, Officer William Gatlin, and Beverly Leonard. What Ms. Hurd testified to in this courtroom is the story of far too many women. But the overwhelming evidence and weight of that evidence shows that it's not her story. It's not Ms. Hurd's story. It was an act of profound cruelty, not just to Mr. Depp, but to true survivors of domestic abuse. For Ms. Hurd to hold herself out as a public figure representing domestic abuse. It was false, it was defamatory, and it caused irreparable harm. In trying to convince you that Mr. Depp has carried his burden of proof in proving that he was never abusive to Amber on even one occasion, think about the message that Mr. Depp and his attorneys are sending to Amber, and by extension to every victim of domestic abuse everywhere. If you didn't take pictures, it didn't happen. If you did take pictures, they're fake. If you didn't tell your friends, you're lying. And if you did tell your friends, they're part of the hoax. If you didn't seek medical treatment, you weren't injured. If you did seek medical treatment, you're crazy. If you do everything that you can to help your spouse, person that you love rid himself of the crushing drug and alcohol abuse that spins him into an abusive, rage-filled monster, you're a nag. And if you finally decide that enough is enough, you've had enough of the fear, enough of the pain, and you have to leave to save yourself, you're a gold digger. That is the message that Mr. Death is asking you to send. But he doesn't stop there. Because in Mr. Depp's world, you don't leave Mr. Depp. And if you do, he will start a campaign of global humiliation against you, a smear campaign that lasts to this very day. He will do everything he can to destroy your life, to destroy your career. That is what they're saying, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what they're trying to get you, the jury, to be an accomplice to. But it's not surprising because Mr. Depp cannot and will not take responsibility for his own actions. It's always someone else's fault.